Howdy BookTube, Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. I come to you again with an original book tag. Uh, last time I did an original, uh, you know, being a non-fiction guy, I wanted to do a kind of topical uh, book tag, and so I did one on the Civil War. And uh, this time around, I wanted to try the American Revolution book tag. That's what I'm going to call this, the American Revolution book tag. And so I hope you enjoy this. I hope you... Um, you, you know, uh, give suggestions for books and stuff. Uh, feel free to comment down in the comment section. And um, I just, I hope you like this. So uh, I, I noticed that I have read a lot of stuff in certain areas as I was putting this tag together. And then there's other areas where I kind of lag a little bit and, or a lot. <laughs> so um, anyway, I wanted to do this tag just for that very reason, so I could fill in some gaps, get some good suggestions for some books, and maybe, you know, use some books that I've read to give you good suggestions. So I hope you enjoy. So question number one of the American Revolution book tag. What are some good books that you have read covering the pre-revolution period from, you know, 1763 to 1775? It'd be that taxation period. And um, so I have got a few books that I would like to talk about with that. Um, my first one is I'm actually going to cheat at my cheat my own tag, and I'm going to go backwards one step before 1763. I'm going to go to the French and Indian War, and this was a book I picked up, George Washington's First War by David Clary, um, his his early military adventures, and this was a absolutely fabulous book. It, it went through a lot of the detail of George Washington during the French and Indian War and really centered around him and what he did and how this war helped to build him into a military commander, you know, for better or for worse. Uh, you know, some he got a lot of positives uh, out of this and, and there were some negatives along the way, but he you know, he had to learn from his mistakes. And so this covers a lot of that early stuff and his mistakes and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I would recommend this read just as a, a background for George Washington and his military career. I thought that was a good book. Another book that I would like to uh, recommend, and this is actually a full history, but it's a very, very slim volume, uh, The Birth of the Republic, 1763 to 1789 by Edmund Morgan. All right. This was a very short uh, novel, but, or not novel, excuse me, very short uh, history of the, you know, the revolution. And it's going to take it from right after the French and Indian War. It's going to go through the taxation period. It's going to go through the revolution. And then it's going to get all the way to uh, the Constitution being created. And if I remember correctly, this is, this has got a lot of, you know, the political stuff in it. It's not like a whole bunch of detailed military stuff. It's, it's mainly a political book. But uh, I, I would recommend that read. That was a good read, and it was it was very quick because of how small it was. And Edmund Morgan, top-notch author, I'd recommend him to anybody studying the the colonial period or the revolution itself. Another one that I want to recommend is another short novel, or I keep saying novel, <laughs> another short history of the uh, of the the American Revolution, a history by Gordon Wood. And this was an absolutely fabulous uh, book, and again, another short one. But um, this is more of the politics and the uh, ideologies of the revolution. And I thought that Gordon Wood did an awesome job of taking a complicated subject and making it very, very simple to understand. This one ran, what, 166 pages. So it's super short very fast read, but you get a really good handle on, uh, you know, just the ideology of where the, where the colonists, future United States citizens, where they were coming from. And, um, I always said that if I taught college, I would definitely use this. This would be a must read, uh, super fast read. And then the last one that really talks about, uh, the taxation period that I enjoyed, it's actually a biography on Sam Adams, Father of the American Revolution by Mark Poles. And um, I would recommend this book. I thought this was a, a great biography of Adams. And a lot of it talks about that early, you know, that taxation period where Sam Adams really gains his fame. So those are four books that I would uh, recommend for 
pre-revolution. And by the way, with any of these questions, you can list one book or you can list a couple books. Go into as much detail as you want. It's your video. Um, so several of these all have multiple uh, books I'm going to talk about. So number two, what are some single volume histories of the American Revolution that you've read? All right, so um, I'll start with a short one. The War for Independence. This is definitely a military history. Well, it even says so. <laughs> military history by Howard Peckham. And uh, I just thought this was fabulous. I use some of the stuff from here, from, from this, this book in my eighth grade class. I think he, he did a very, very good job of writing it. He's, he's descriptive, but um, he, he gives detail, but not too much detail. He's a good storyteller as far as military histories go. And I, I really enjoyed this. I thought this was good. Um, so I would recommend that. I would also recommend probably, and, and this one would probably be my favorite book that covers the entire uh, revolution. And it's from the Oxford History of the United States series. It's called The Glorious Cause, uh, The American Revolution from 1763 to 1789 by Robert Middlecoff. And this book is fabulous. It is, it is very detailed and it gets the pre-revolution, the revolution, and then all the way into the, you know, that period uh, where they're building the Constitution. And Middlecoff just did a fabulous, fabulous job. And again, this is another book that I pull stuff out of for my eighth grade class. I think it's, as a matter of fact, I'm going to come back to that one again on another question. So, oh, and then a third book that I would recommend, I don't have the copy in front of me because I have it in my classroom at school, um, but it's called The American Revolution by Edward Countryman. And it's very interesting because a lot of this stuff that we're looking at, a lot of the histories that you look at, um, they do it from the perspective of the generals and the, uh, you know, the, the guys that were in the Continental Congress. They do it from the, the rich man's point of view. And Edward Countryman's book actually does it from the ordinary soldier, the farmer, the women, the African Americans, uh, the, the free and slave. Uh, the Native Americans. He does it from all of the, the other perspectives. And so it's a really good uh, look at what's going on inside the United States or what will be the United States. And it doesn't necessarily do a blow-by-blow -blow description of each of the battles in the, in the war. It actually does it from all of the other inner conflicts. And I thought that was a, a pretty good read. And I, I would recommend that one. I'll try to get a picture of that uh, put on here. Um, let's see. Question number three. What is a multi-volume series on the American Revolution that you would recommend? For me, uh, and, and they've only got one volume out, but I absolutely loved it. I mentioned it in another uh, video. Rick Atkinson's The British Are Coming. And this is volume one. It's a military history of the American Revolution. It covers the war for America, Lexington to Princeton, 1775 to 1777. And so this is the only volume that's out in the trilogy, uh, but I absolutely love it. And the reason I put that one out there, even though I haven't read all three, because I can't read all three because they're not out, but um, I honestly, I have not read any multi-volume histories of the American Revolution. I know they're out there. I just haven't read them. And so this is the only multi-volume that I could actually recommend that I have read. So great book. Highly recommend it. Very detailed as far as all the military stuff that's going on. All right. So question number four in the American Revolution book tag. What are your favorite books on American generals and soldiers during the American Revolution? So you could, you could take either or. I was thinking about my Civil War book tag, and I did it from just the general's point of view. And then I got to thinking, well, I just skipped the vast majority of the army by doing it that way. So if you, if it's a, you know, maybe a biography or just a, a history of the common soldier, I, I don't care. That's up to you what you want to present. And if you guys are followers of my channel, you know, I'm a huge fan of George Washington and I like to read about George Washington. I have a bunch of books on him. Uh, but for this one, I didn't pick, even though he's the commanding general, I did not uh, pick a book on him. I wanted to go with something a little bit different. And so I took John Paul Jones, Sailor, Hero, Father of the American Navy by Evan Thomas. And I thought this was a fabulous book. Uh, I didn't know anything about John Paul Jones before I read this. I was, I, I was a totally blank canvas. 
And so when I read this, this just, it, it fascinated me. And it was a fast read and, and uh, talked about a, a whole lot of pretty cool stuff because I never read about the Navy because the, the, um, the, the Navy at that, the Continental Navy at that time pretty much did not exist. There was not much of anything to speak of. And so uh, this book, not only is it a good biography of John Paul Jones himself, but it's also a good history of the, uh, the American Navy. So I, I would recommend that one. And then this is one of the best uh, books on the, from the point of view of the average American soldier. And it's called A Narrative of a Revolutionary Soldier, Some of the Adventures, Dangers, and Sufferings of Joseph Plum Martin with an introduction by Thomas Fleming. And the memoir was previously published as Private Yankee Doodle. And I've got the Signet Classic here. And um, this, is, this is pretty cool. Uh, of all of the the reminiscences of soldiers, this is the most complete of all of them, or at least that's what I've read anyway. The history books say this is the most complete, and Joseph Plum Martin just does a pretty cool job of telling the story of the average soldier and his plights. It was not always a a uh, good story. There was a lot of stress and, and negative stuff that came with being a continental soldier. So anyway, great, great autobiography or, or uh, memoir, whatever you want to call it. And it was originally, by the way, originally published as a, um, it was published in the newspaper and they did, you know, little segments every week or every month, I can't remember, but uh, every so often in the newspaper. And then they ended up in his old age, he ended up collecting all of them and putting them into the book, into book form. I thought that, I thought it was great. Um, let's see, question number five. What are your favorite books on British generals and soldiers during the American Revolution? Now, this is the one that I really struggled on because I... Personally, in my in my personal library here, I have not read any, or, or excuse me, not collected any, or read any on just the British from the British perspective. I have read no biographies on British generals. I do have one in particular that I want to buy that I just haven't gotten around to, and I am going to for this question. I'm actually going to mention two books by John Richard Alden, uh, "The American Revolution, 1775 to 1783." And I'm also going to uh, mention A History of the American Revolution, which is also by John Alden. Um, both of those books are, were very good books. And he, I thought he did a very, uh, very good job of looking at it from both the American and the British perspective. And he, he wrote a biography on Thomas Gage. And so that's the book I really want to get just because I've read Alden before and I trust him. I want to read that book on Thomas Gage. Other than that, I have no other books. So this this question is really to you, BookTube. What would you suggest? What would you suggest to a guy who's a fan of the American Revolution who has read nothing from uh, the British perspective? So I would really like to read that. All right. So let's move forward here. Um, number six. What are a couple of your favorite books on individual battles and or campaigns during the American Revolution? And so I do have several of them. I had the problem that there's a bunch of them that are actually at school right now. So I'll mention a couple of them, or one of them's gonna be at school and I, and I brought three of them down from the library that I thought were real good. Um, so the first one I'm gonna mention is uh, Bunker Hill, A City, A Siege, a revolution and that's by Nathaniel Philbrick and of course that you know that's the early stages of the war uh, when they were trying to drive the the uh, drive the British out and trying to gain a foothold trying to get the high ground and all that and Nathaniel Philbrick is a fabulous storyteller if you've never read any of his books you need to get his books he, he is just a great storyteller uh, so I would start with that one uh, Let's see here. The next one is by another great storyteller. Not only is he a great storyteller, he's a great historian, as Nathaniel Philbrick is also. But this is David Hackett Fisher and um, Washington's Crossing, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, Washington's Crossing. And it deals with crossing of the Delaware, the Battle of Trenton and Princeton, 
and I just thought the world of this book. It was great. Uh, very detailed in everything going on with the Battle of Trenton. I really liked it because it, it did some uh, some pretty pretty good, I think, pretty good research uh, from the Hessians. And I didn't know a ton about the Hessians, and it gives some pretty good history of the Hessian soldiers. Uh, it gives a history of this painting, Washington's you know, crossing the Delaware, that famous painting. Uh, it gives the history of that painting. I thought that was really neat. And um, by the German, oh, what is his name? German, German painter, Lutz, is that right? Oh, Emanuel Lutz. Yep, and he painted that in 1851. But anyway, gives a history of that painting and then just gives the history of these battles. And I thought it was absolutely great. Um, I would recommend it. And both of those are very fast reads. The books look a little bit big, but they read real fast. Another book I'd like to recommend is Washington's Secret War, The Hidden History of Valley Forge by Thomas Fleming. And I read this book uh, a couple weeks back, and I did a, a book review on this. Uh, this was a, a pretty good book. It was all about Valley Forge, of course, in the winter and everything. I know it's not fighting per se, but it was a, it was a campaign for survival, most definitely. So I would I'd recommend that book. And then uh, the last one that I'm going to put on this list of recommendations is Victory at Yorktown, a campaign that won the war. And it's by Richard Ketchum. Now, that book's at school. I don't have that copy with me, so I can't show you what it looks like. Um, but uh, th that was a great book, uh, talking about the end and getting the, the war wrapped up. And, and uh, just thought it was a great account. Question number seven. What are some books on the post-revolution that you have read? And so, post-revolution, follow-up, uh, the, the in-between years from the revolution to uh, basically 1780s. And the first one I'm going to recommend is, uh, I just got done reading this, The Return of George Washington, 1783 to 1789, Edward Larson. And it deals with the creation of the Constitution and leading into the that first presidency, and that was a that was a pretty good book. I also did a book review on that, and I will try to put the, I'll try to remember to put the links down in the description for those. Uh, another recommendation that I would uh, that I would do is, let's see. Founding, Founding Brothers, which uh, is by Joseph Ellis. Founding Brothers, the Revolutionary Generation, won the Pulitzer Prize. Very good uh, book. And it's basically a short story of all the Founding Fathers. There's a, one story with each of the guys that are on the, on the book cover there. And it's all of the things that they had to do in order to get our nation running. Now, some of this was 1780s, but also runs into the 1790s and early 1800s. But it was basically creating the foundations of our nation to make it survive. And um, I just thought this was a, it was a fast read, not a huge book by any means, but, uh, you know, very good. De uh, talks about dealing with the, the attempt at dealing with slavery, how to get the cap, you know, where should we put the capital, dealing with the, the federal debt, uh, Let's see, you know, just several different issues that they dealt with in the beginnings of our nation. And right along with that is American Creation, also by Joseph Ellis. And a uh, great book, a little bit bigger book this time, but it's the same thing. It's a lot of, it's several short stories. And this one goes from, from in the revolution, some of the stuff they did to after the revolution. So that falls into that, you know, that category of that question. And then last... I have to throw in one more time the glorious cause because it uh, it goes to 1789 and and I can't speak enough of Robert Middlecoff. This is one of my favorite books on the American Revolution. He just did an awesome job, and so wanted to throw that one in for this question as well. Uh, next uh, next question is what is a favorite fiction book covering the American Revolution? I chose uh, a couple books. Number one of them we read with our middle school. My brother Sam is dead, and it is by James Lincoln Collier and Christopher Collier, and it goes with a family that's split in its loyalties and what are they going to do? And and one of them, 
uh, you know, deals deals with how does how does uh, George Washington deal with uh, treason and stuff like that. Uh, very good book. Kids always love it. And the second book is April Morning by Howard Fast. Now that one's a little bit older book, but it deals with the Battle of Lexington and Concord, and it's a, a teenage boy who is at odds again over, uh, you know, dealing with loyalties and stuff, and he's at odds with his with his family just a little bit, and and uh, he is at the battles of Lexington and Concord, and the when the uh, British troops were returning to Boston and he's right there in that adventure. And I thought that was a good book. Uh, a little bit slower paced, but good book. Number nine, what, what are any books that you would want to uh, mention dealing with the American Revolution? So stuff that you didn't get into the previous questions that maybe you still want to talk about. Um, you know, this could be like uh, women's history, uh, prisons, the Navy, Sons of Liberty. I mean, it could be anything, anything dealing with the revolutionary period. And so I chose a couple books by uh, Bruce Chadwick. One is just a, uh, it's called George Washington's War, the Forging of a Revolution. The Forging of a Revolutionary Leader in the American Presidency. And so I thought that was a really good one. And it's just an overall very, very readable, very easy to understand uh, book on Washington and his role. And then the other one is The First American Army, The Untold Story of George Washington and the Men Behind America's First Fight for Freedom. And I thought this one was great, again, by Bruce Chadwick. Um, the reason I like this one so much is it deals or it talks a lot about uh, issues of like disease when smallpox was going through, um, feeding the army, clothing the army, just getting doctors for general problems that they have in the army. I thought this was a great book for that kind of stuff. I had not read any books on those particular topics and and it does it from the you know from the average soldier's point of view. I know it went heavily in detail on Benedict Arnold and uh, the stuff in Canada, the march to Quebec, and and um, let's see, talks a lot about Valley Forge and what they suffered from. So anyway, I thought that was a great book. And I'd also like to throw in George Washington's Secret Six. And that, of course, was about the spy ring that George Washington ran in order to, um, you know, successfully counter the British intelligence. Uh, he had to do something about that. And, of course, then they had um, the, the History Channel, I think it was History Channel's show that was kind of based on that stuff, dealing with the spy ring. And then uh, another one kind of goes with that same category is Valiant Ambition, George Washington, Benedict Arnold, and the Fate of the American Revolution by Nathaniel Philbrick. And I had both of those books were at school, so I couldn't show you. Sorry about that. But um, I thought those were great books. And that, of course, deals with the treachery of Benedict Arnold and the treason and, uh, or, um, yeah. And so I thought that was, I thought that was really good. Very readable, Nathaniel Philbrick again. And last but not least, a bonus question for you. Who or, or what, what authors would you recommend, who would you recommend to read for the Revolutionary Period? And I picked a couple of them that I think are very, very readable. I think Joseph Ellis is a great read, Robert Middlecoff. Gordon Wood, Edmund Morgan, and Bernard Balin, all three. They're a little bit higher end uh, as far as, um, you know, they Joseph Ellis and Robert Middlecoff write where the average person can understand it fairly, fairly easily. Uh, Gordon Wood and Edmund Morgan are, are both a little more intellectual with their writings, and Bernard Balin is as well. And Bernard Balin also does a lot of colonial stuff. His is more the early stuff. So anyway, I would recommend any of those five, and basically anybody I've talked about here. But those five are my some of my favorites to read about, or, or their stuff is my my favorite stuff to read. So anyway, BookTube. I hope you like this this uh, book tag on the American Revolution. Uh, if I was going to tag anybody, it'd be anybody who's read enough American Revolution to answer the questions. So feel free to uh, leave comments down below on different books that you've read. The whole purpose of this thing is for me to expand my reading list to make that TBR, uh, TBR list grow. 
So if you've stuck with me the whole time, I really thank you for that, and I hope you enjoyed this. And BookTube, you have a great day, and happy reading.